conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. This isn't a friendly visit. Um, this comes after a conversation and an observation that sort of followed. Um, and I'm going to keep it real. This falls in direct alignment with the uh, intro video about the fundraiser for the Odyssey Project, Black Man Lead, and the work we do. If you have been keeping up with the book readings that I've been doing from Born in Captivity, you should have a greater insight to just the depth of the work we do and what it's going to take to win this battle for black empowerment um, and get away from the illusion that we are already winning. Uh, that's how, that's one of the quickest ways to keep a person at bay is to make them feel that uh, they've already arrived. Um, and we are so heavily weighted in symbolism that the symbols of success, we surround ourselves with it and we convince ourselves we have a success until there's a need for actual power and we have none. And then we start whining and complaining again. Um, I saw what a brother wrote uh, that you can't finance your oppressor and starve and starve your freedom fighters and ever expect to be free. Let me explain to you what that means. I've actually been saying for probably 15 or 16 years that we are financing our own demise. Uh, and I've pointed to many, many examples of how we do it. We consistently as consumers go back into the very economy of the people who we say are oppressing us and spend handedly. We are in increasing numbers becoming more aware of the fact that even Dr. King had to admit that he was integrating us into a burning house and that there were some inherent issues with integration beginning with the fact that we surrendered ownership to so much of our wealth in order to patronize our white counterparts. When I look at the push to get support for work that is so necessary in the community for thousands of hours of research that opened the door for understanding of the nefarious uh, machinations and plans and schemes and and, and things that have been instituted and implemented and, and levied against us for years and to how to overcome it and how to properly prepare and educate our children and so much more, the, 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 the instruments for proper racial socialization, all these things just at the, at the work uh, in the hands of me and the people at the Odyssey Project, uh, a think tank, 
uh, literally an entire research, uh, research center. All of this stuff is being done. Uh, I've given you volume at the volume of written content in books and articles. I've given you hour after hour of lectures and videos. Um, all pointing to something. Dr. Naeem Mokbar, Doc, Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, Neely Fuller Jr., Dr. John Heinrich Clark, Dr. Ben, uh, Asa Hilliard, and I can go on down the line. We've I mean, just been going and going and going. We've made no progress. Uh, and the vast majority of our master teachers die broke. Uh, die worn out, die beaten up, die ostracized when each one of them had the capacity to take what they knew and use it for their own well-being and self-fulfillment and probably in some way be harmful to their own and chose not to and we didn't get behind their work. I've been asking for support for years and I'm 20 plus years in the game on an organizational level. I've been doing this since before I was an adult, but on an organizational level, I literally took my entertainment company and transformed it into a community outreach center, walked away from that part of the game and invested my knowledge into pouring into the passion because I saw what was happening to my people and I could no longer be a partaker of a situation in which my people were suffering. And I have te taught against it, I have preached against it. But what I look at is we are literally readily financing our oppressor. We're literally financing our own demise while starving the people who are fighting for our freedom. Uh, this can't continue. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So you won't think I'm just on some emotional rant. And actually I had no intent on having this conversation today. And uh, with you guys until I had this other conversation and, and that conversation was followed up by this post that I read. There are several studies and in these studies we find that on three selective days and periods blacks spend a half a trillion dollars of their quote unquote 3.5 to 4 trillion in spending power. And I'm going to talk about that before I quit, before I get off. But they, uh, we do. So we spend somewhere around 40, 45, 50 billion on candy for Halloween. Blacks. This is specifically blacks. Now I could be off on the numbers, but I'm going to get to the primary number. Again, on Thanksgiving, a double double digits in billions. For Thanksgiving, and then 453 billion for Christmas. Now, couple that with this: while whites have six to seven times, depending on what study, six to eight times, depending on what study you look at, of uh, medial ho median household wealth uh, than blacks, blacks buy twice as many. As Mercedes as whites. Um, blacks spend two billion a year alone on Jordans. Uh, and there are other symbols that we invest heavily in. What am I getting at? What am I trying to point out? What am I saying? I'm saying that at some point, we're going to have to own our responsibility for empowering ourselves. We're going to have to ask ourselves the question, is it more important for me to present the image of being successful and empowered? Or is it more important for me to empower myself and do it by means of empowering others and joining with others and connecting with others and actually taking steps that put my children, my offspring, my grandchildren and their grandchildren in a better position to succeed against a system that is inherently hostile towards them. They are not being properly educated through the academic system. How do we handle that? We have to create means and mechanisms through which we do empower them. People say, well, what do you mean when you say education? Well, we've been told education is the attainment of academic skills like reading, writing, 
um, math and to learn how to put those skills together in some form or craft to get a job in corporate, corporate America so that we can earn a living. That is the attainment of skills. Education is the preparation and empowerment of an individual to be able to use their mind, to be able to use their gifting, to be able to use their skills to go out and create a path for themselves that benefits them, those they love and care about. Now, in, in the process of doing this, there's going to be a cross-section, intersection that where you're going to have people you're going to help because they help you. But you cannot be in a situation in which you are going to consistently pour massive amounts of money into something that does not give back in any way. That's not good business. That's not a good investment strategy. That never produces anything but a one-sided power, uh, power flex. We are literally financing our oppressor, financing the wealthy elite, financing those who exploit their power and use it over us while simultaneously starving the very ones who have the mindset the mentality, the know-how, and the guts to stand up and go to war on our behalf. That can't continue. We easily ignore the yearning, the cry, the desperation of our people to put up a false flex. Because what we're finding is because we haven't set up a structure to where we are uniquely empowered through uh, through a uh, some form of autonomy, that even when we become extremely wealthy, our wealth can be easily impacted by others. Ask Kanye, ask Kyrie. And so, in other words, you can remain wealthy as long as you put up the illusion that you're helping your people. Oprah, Tyler. But not really truly doing it. Because with multiple billions of resources, there are programs, there are Practices, there are needs that can be met with a fraction of that and have a massive impact on a local and national level if you are truly about change. What we see are the illusions, the nonprofit industrial complex. They show up with their 5013 Cs. They have the name. They have everything that they need to raise the money. They raise the money. They put up these big signs. They do these uh, photo shoots. They do all this. But we don't see the results. Because there are missing components that have a massive influence on the effectiveness of what they're doing. You can't tell me that the people involved don't know because just like I did research and I understand the, the necessity of certain elements and components within anything that I attempt, uh, I know when it's missing and so do they. So they know what they're doing won't work, but it's a good illusion. Hey man, we put millions and then what does it do? You've got to be real careful what you're pushing and you're allowing to happen because here's what happens. When you have that situation where you got You've got a um, a group, just say a group of boys, and they're saying they're putting X amount of million dollars a year into this program, and the crime rate doesn't drop, the violence doesn't drop, domestic abuse doesn't drop. Then what do you think they say? Well, we put millions into it and nothing changed. That's just how they are. I read about that in my book. They're gonna they're gonna use. Uh, pathology as a means of explaining the behavior without dealing with the source. They're not going to deal with the model that go, gives you the reason why they're behaving that way. They're definitely not going to deal with the model that gives you the explanation of how you intercept it, how you intervene, how you change it. I've given you that model. 
And the crazy thing is they can't say they don't know because it's the exact same model they're using for their kids. But we don't see it in our community because it doesn't exist on a grand scale. We aren't properly socializing our boys or our girls. We aren't preparing them. We aren't pushing values, interests, and principles that are immensely uh, necessary for growth and empowerment amongst our people. We are, spawn, uh, we are spurning marriage. We are spurning collectivity. We are pushing individualism. We are pushing selfishness and narcissism at a rate and a level you cannot imagine. We are not dealing with trauma. We are ineffectively preparing and educating our youth. We are whining and complaining. The mechanisms of wealth are the same. Have they done everything in their power to interrupt our efforts? Yes, but that doesn't mean they can stop us. Definitely not with the technology we have today. We should be uh, working and building and investing. That's why I created Legacy Wealth. Uh, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to show you what to do. Now, whether you do it or not is another thing. But what, what we cannot do and sit up here and be comfortable financing our oppressor and starving the ones fighting for our freedom. Can't I can't do anything to make you change. I can't do anything to make you want to give. I can't make you I can't do anything to change your mindset about consumerism, about uh presenting to the world. I can't do anything about that, but what I won't do is sit back and silently condone it. I won't sit back and act like it's okay. It's not okay. I look at the great minds that came before me. I look at the great voices that came before me. I look at the great thinkers that came before me. And I look at how they were consumed and discharged. And except for a few memes here and there, pretty much forgotten. The geniuses, the Amos Wilsons, the Francis Cress Wellsings, uh, the one still alive, Dr. George Artigrew, Dr. Howard Stevens, uh, Stevens, C. Stevenson, Dr. Um, Khaled Muhammad, uh, who passed away, but uh, so many, Dr. Claude Anderson, oh my God, so many great minds. Y'all don't, y'all may not like this one, but this dude is all right with me. Uh, he definitely, yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone, but. Dr. Umar Johnson, if you want a guy that's going to deliver facts that you can fact check, the dude is on point. You're going to deal with his personality. You're going to deal with all the bravado, but I'm good with that because I'm not challenged by it. I'm not uh, in intimidated by it. I'm not trying to compete with him. So all that stuff doesn't bother me. I'm wondering is what, when he says something, can I go look it up and find it? And every time I can. So, great mind. But we'll find a way to discredit him because we don't like his personality. Okay. We don't like his personality. What about this person? What about this person? What about this? You got to find somebody that you can believe in. You're never going to find somebody that they say everything you want them to say. They're not your doll. They're not your puppet. They're, matter of fact, if they're critical thinkers, they're going to be off on something that's going to challenge you consistently because they're never going to be in the vein of the status quo. But what you cannot do is be caught up in a situation where you are spending way more money with your oppressor than you are in funding the ones fighting for your freedom. Now, you don't have to like what I said. You don't have to change how you're going to move and do it uh, and do and deal and all of that. I can't force you to. My, my job is never to force anybody to do anything, but I'm not going to sit there and pretend like it's okay. So that when the hammer drops, when the next big cataclysmic thing happens, we'll be able to look back at this video and I'll be able to say, I told you. You know how many times I've been able to do that in the last 15 years? I just keep things that I've been telling you are going to happen keeps happening. And we keep doing the same thing. That's on us. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, try to unwind for the day. I still have some things to do, but I need to unwind. I've been wound tight today. I've got to have so much going on. Uh, but anyway, with that being said, you do the things in life 
as far as I'm concerned, I, I want a life that after I've lived it, it speaks of me in a way that I'm okay of my great, great grandkids hearing. You know, they're gonna hear about some stuff I did that I'm not proud of. But for the most part, they're gonna say this dude came, he showed up, he put in the work, he gave, he thought of us in his work. He fought to give us a better chance. He believed in his people even when his people weren't supporting him and believing in him. That's the legacy I'm going to leave. It's going to be written. It's going to be captured in video. It's going to be captured in my work and in the things that you can see and the number of people in the lives that I've touched already and however many I'm going to touch before I take my last breath. But I guarantee you I'm going to challenge you. We cannot continue to do what we're doing. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. By the time this goes up, I'm pretty sure it'll be later in the day because I'm not going to put it up now. I'm going ahead to chill. So it'll be probably 8 o'clock central before I get it up. But that's that. I'm out. Thank you.